Hello, I'm Robert Simpson, and if you've ever wondered how a circuit breaker works, this video may be for you. I'd like to thank Professor Bernhard Thies for the graphics we'll be using, as it was provided by him, and the technical details have been reviewed by him as well. So let's get started! Buffer type circuit breaker operation. First, we will discuss how a low current puffer style circuit breaker works. This is the style of breaker often operated using SF6 at higher distribution and transmission level voltages. Here's a cross section of a puffer style circuit breaker in the closed or operating position. If you don't have hands-on or practical experience with a circuit breaker, this may look a little confusing. Circuit breakers are cylindrical at the higher voltages that this style of breaker is used in. So each cross section is mirrored around the horizontal axis. The outer conductor is basically a hollow cylinder housing the interior parts, similar to how a gas insulated bus bar or oil filled power cables are designed. The orange parts are the current carrying parts of the breaker. On the left is the moving contacts and on the right are the stationary contacts. Here we have the main current carrying contacts on the moving side. And here are the contacts on the stationary side. Inside these cylinders we have our braking gas or puffer volume as it may also be called. And in the middle of the breaker we have our arcing contacts. There are also refill and overpressure valves on the puffer cylinder and a nozzle used in the braking operation that will show up again later. As the current increases to levels above that of safe operation, the moving parts of the breaker begin to slide away from the stationary contacts. Here is when the current begins to commutate away from the main contacts to the arcing contacts. As the graphic shows, the braking gas is put under increased pressure from the mechanical part of the braking action. As the sliding contact continues to pull away from the closed position, we see arcing begin as the current tries to continue conducting through ionized gases due to the electrical field stresses. As the breaker continues the opening action, the nozzle opens, giving the puffer gas an escape from the built-up pressure. The electronegative properties of the puffer gas help absorb the positive ionic charge of the electric arc, and the motion of the gas rapidly pushes the ionized particles away from the discharging surfaces, leaving the breaker to complete its opening action, having safely removed the short circuit arc. After a successful operation, the breaker will need to close again. This connection is pretty straightforward. The breaker reconnects and the puffer volume is refilled via the valve at the bottom. Once all the closing connections are made, the breaker may begin normal operation again. So that's how a puffer breaker works with a fairly low current, but at higher currents, braking can require more power to safely operate the connection in the required amount of time. For this, we can use self-blast breakers. Sadly, I don't have a nice graphic for self-blast breakers, so we'll need to use our imagination a little bit with pictures I do have. The principle of a self-blasting breaker is very similar to a lower current breaker, but self-blasting breakers use the energy from ablation, or evaporating materials, to aid in their braking action. As you can see here, there is a separate cylinder in the self-blast circuit that's kept under a higher pressure than the normal compression volume. This reduces the cost of the system by reducing how much stored energy is needed to operate the breaker. During a high current event, the energy causes ablation in parts of the breaker. The energy from this ablation heats up the puffer volume and causes it to blow out of its containing vessel if the section gets weak enough. If the braking energy is not strong enough to cause the required ablation, a self-blast breaker may operate in the same method of a regular puffer breaker. Again, here we have the main stationary contacts and the moving contacts. During a braking action, the moving contacts move again, but the ablation causes the section here to fail, giving our pressurized heated gas an exit to move quickly through the gas nozzle like previously. The difference between this and a normal puffer operation being that here the gas moves much more quickly through the nozzle due to the extra energy imparted to the gas from the ablating section. If the current is low enough to not cause the breaker to self-blast, the topology of the breaker operates normally. As you may suspect, a self-blast breaker requires more maintenance after a self-blast event than a standard puffer breaker does before it is in normal operation condition again. Circuit breakers are an important part of the electrical grid, and the venting of their gases may rightly concern you. While SF6 is a severe greenhouse gas, with an impact of about 22,000 times more than CO2, there are ongoing efforts to replace it. I'm aware of research using CF3I, among other options, as an SF6 alternative, and considering how much safer it is as a greenhouse gas, with an impact of roughly half that of CO2, you can worry a little less about the impact breakers will have in our future. Now I hope you can understand how a circuit breaker works, and thank you for watching, and feel free to share what you've learned. 